I'm Dr. Emily Porter. I'm a board-certified emergency physician in Austin, Texas. So I'm also happen to be um, the sister of Katie Porter, who's a representative in Congress, who about a week ago made national headlines for her whiteboard. Right now, we're in the middle of this coronavirus outbreak. And everyone is really confused because they don't understand why, do, why are the bars closing? Why is everyone hoarding toilet paper? And what does social distancing mean? What does flatten the curve mean? I'm going to show you on my whiteboard why doctors, governors, and other people around the country are concerned about coronavirus and why every American should be, and really everyone around the world should be. So numbers-wise, in America, we have 331 million people. So the CDC is estimating that about 40 to 70 percent of them will get infected. So to make the numbers easy, I'm going to say that it's 150 million people. That's about 45 percent. So on the lower end of that 40 to 70 percent. So if 150 million people get infected, you know, 80 percent of them are going to be just fine. So 20 percent of people will need hospital hospitalization. Italy has a big problem right now, and they don't have enough hospital beds for people. Well, they have more hospital beds per capita in Italy than they have in America. So 80 percent fine, 20 percent need a hospitalization. 5 to 10 percent of the, of the 150 million that get infected are going to need a ventilator, life support. What it does is it helps their lungs rest, it helps their heart rest, it gives their body time to heal because we don't have a cure for this virus, we don't have an antiviral drug that works, and we don't have a vaccine. Let's say 5 percent of the people need ventilators. 5 percent of 150 million people is 7.5 million vents needed in America. So I start thinking, well, how many do we have in America? Like, I'm in Texas. It's a big state. We've got a lot of big hospital systems. We probably have more than enough to take care of everybody. So I looked it up. And in Texas, we only have about 4,000. Um, and so America-wide, we have about, they estimate between 72,000 and 120,000. We're going to say we have 150,000. So let's say we have 150,000 vents available in the country. 0.02% of people could get a ventilator if they needed one. One in 50 people who need a ventilator can get one. That means that 49 people out of 50 are going to die. That is scary. That should scare you. That, should, that scares me. That should scare everybody who can understand basic math, including my second grader, that one in 50 are bad odds. So what that also means is that the doctors have to choose who that one in 50 is. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if, if you had to say, oh, I'm sorry, you have had cancer before, so therefore you're not, you don't have a perfectly clean bill of health, so you're not worth saving. Can you imagine saying, oh, I'm sorry, you're 80, and I've got a 30-year-old that needs the ventilator? making those choices, because that's what they're doing in Italy right now. Unless you want somebody to decide whether you're worth saving, or your dad, or your sister, or your baby, or your grandma is worth saving, you have to do your part to prevent us from having to make these decisions, because we're heading there, and we're heading there very, very quickly. So you've heard about flattening the curve. This is what that curve means. The number of cases of coronavirus, if we don't do anything, besides just what we've been doing, if we follow other countries' leads, it's basically exponentially growing. It means it doubles to triples every two days or so, roughly. And this is the healthcare system capacity. That's a line. If we don't do anything without protective measures, we're going to end up up here, above the ability to take care of everybody. What that means is that all these people and probably more die. They die because we don't have ventilators for them. And we have to start playing Russian roulette of who's going to get saved. We're practicing social distancing. We're not going out of the house except to the grocery store to go for a walk. Those are the protective measures, as well as hand sanitizer, uh, washing your hands, covering your cough, you know, sneezing into your elbow. I get it. Like, it stinks. My spring break got canceled. My kids are devastated. I don't want to homeschool children. I work full time. I'm not saying it's ideal. But it's, it's what has to be done, the experts are saying, to prevent this from happening. There's a million reasons to be angry and unhappy and, and just think that this whole thing sucks because it does. But what really sucks is losing 47 million people. So I'm washing my hands. I'm doing my part. And I'm also just 
listening to what I'm being told by the experts, and I really hope that you can too. This is about everybody coming together for the common good that we want a future for our children. And it's two weeks, man. It's like two to four weeks. And I hope that if you care about anybody other than yourself, including especially these 47 million Americans, that you will also do the same and just not complain about it and just do it because it's what we got to do.